How often do you think about your body? Specifically, how you use your body? I know, it's sort of a weird question. But if I were to guess, it's probably one of four times. One, you are getting dressed and looking at yourself in the mirror. Two, you are exercising. Three, it is hurting you. Four, you are engaged in, let's call it exciting aerobic activity. It's really easy to fall into a trap where we think of our body as this vehicle that carries around our head and our brain. I know from day to day for myself, I tend to fall into this line of thinking a lot. And even after years of movement training and learning to pay attention to it, to listen to it, so on and so on and so on. Even then, I still wind up falling into this trap. And when I'm not thinking of it that way, I'm very often thinking of it critically. You know, when I was in my 20s, this looked this way. When I was in my 30s, this looked this way. I put on weight. I've put on this. I've done all this. I've lost muscle. Whatever. And never mind, of course, the fact that when I was in my 20s, I was in my 20s, and now I'm in my 40s. Basically, it's a really easy trap to fall into, and it makes you forget all the good things that your body helps you with. And so, cards on the table here, I actually recorded this video a couple of times, trying to demonstrate how to use planes with your entire body, hold a camera steady, the different things that everybody uses their body for. But that's too much for just this one video. Instead today, I want to talk about when your body is telling you you need rest. And I'm gonna make a series of videos about the different ways that different people would think about using their body. And it's gonna be part of this greater series of videos that I am working on that's gonna focus on tools. Where the tools came from, why some of them have survived, why some of them we don't really use anymore. All of that is coming down the pipeline. It's in the works, as you might say. So let's get into it. <laughs> I'm also working on getting the finish off of this axe handle because I hate the finish. And so I'm just gonna do that while I talk with you about this. So first, I wanna tell you about this awesome book. It's called Karfsnit by Yoge Sunquist. And I immediately apologize for my pronunciation because I'm fairly sure that I did not get that right. And I am sorry. He is widely considered an authority on the subject. In the book, he talks about how to place the knife in your hand. He talks about how to use your fingers as guides as you're moving it along the wood. But the thing he talked about that made me really stop and go, how have I never thought about this before? Is when he talks about which muscle groups you are using to make that cut moving from your shoulder. And when you do that, you're using all of the big muscle groups in your back. And when I read that, I thought to myself, wait a minute, this is the same kind of stuff I need to keep in mind if I'm on stage, in the workshop, when I'm taking a photograph. And that's what led me to, how can I make sure I can keep doing those things? And now, of course, when I was in my 20s, I'd just go and go and go and go. Tired, push through it. Didn't feel great, no reason not to get it done. Keep working, don't stop until it's done, or you feel like you're gonna fall over. In some cases, when you fall over. And that's, of course, a very common attitude. You wanna get the work done, because you're defined by your work, right? Well, if you watch a lot of this channel, if you watch a lot of my videos, you know that I get chronic migraines, and that I have been in the middle of an intractable migraine attack for just over two years, which means that I have migraine symptoms every day. In fact, at some point, probably fairly soon, I'm gonna need to turn this off and I'm gonna need to go lie down because the brain fog is just gonna become too thick to move through and too dense to speak to you through. Now, I had chronic migraine once before in my late 20s and it absolutely changed my relationship to my body and drastically changed the amount of rest and forgiveness that I need to offer to myself for not being able to get up and do the stuff that I had been doing before it had become chronic. Eventually, I sort of got it under control and it became more episodic. At that point, I didn't need to worry about it quite as much. But then, of course, two years ago, it all became chronic again. And even more than the first time now, I've got to find ways to offer myself forgiveness and recognize when I just need to rest because I can't speak right anymore. I can barely stand anymore. I'm pushing my way through the day, just 
trying to stay upright sometimes. And I've got to have some energy to offer to my family. And so that'll often wind up meaning sacrificing time in here in my photography studio. But it's also made me rethink who I am and what defines me. I am an artist. I am a maker. I'm also now a content creator. And I'm a teacher. I am a father, a husband. Like you, I am the summary of all my experiences. That's what's really shaped me. That's what's really made me who I am. That's what's made it so I can make interesting things. And I love the things that I make. And also, the things that I make don't define me. The number of things I get done in a week doesn't determine my worth, doesn't determine my importance, none of that. And I know, I know that we're all built to think that what we're able to accomplish in whatever given time is how much we're worth. How much the things that we create are worth, that tells us what we're worth. It doesn't. You, you are worth rest, are worth your own health, mental and physical. Take time to rest. You won't just be helping yourself, you'll be helping all of the people that you need to help. That piece of furniture is still gonna be there after you take a nap, after you go get some food. And just so we all understand, I'm terrible at doing this stuff. This chronic sickness has made me take all of this way more seriously than I ever have before. And even with all of that, I'm still terrible at it. But I also recognize that I can forgive myself for that. And I know that all of the self-maintenance that I am doing, that's gonna help me be a better father, better husband. And so I lay down. I take a nap. I take a rest, come back to something later. Because the more work that I do to make myself myself, the more work I'm gonna get done as an artist. So, if you need it, here's your permission to go take a nap, to go for a walk, to go get a snack, to go, you know, sharpen the saw, or reshape the ax handle, or whatever. Let yourself recharge. And then we'll talk about using your body to support the way that you use tools. Thank you so very much for watching. If you like what I'm doing, subscribe, like, comment. Even if you just leave your initials or call me a name in the comment section, more people will see the video and it'll just be great. And speaking of things that are great, here's a list of the great, awesome people who are my patrons on Patreon. If you would like to see your name in this list of great, awesome people, head over to Patreon and support me. But even if you don't go support me on Patreon, I am still beyond grateful for your support, your views, and for checking me out. Okay, see you next time.